condition we're live guys welcome back to another episode of box my name just want to make my table a little bit little bit little bit higher here so welcome back it's already in november it's the second of november it's actually a really bright and sunny day outside here in hong kong so welcome to the live stream today we always do live streams at 11 a.m hong kong time on monday and friday so make sure you catch up to our live streams and today what we're going to cover is a very quick glance at the market here a little bit happened over the weekend but honestly not too much crypto is creeping up a little bit slowly day by day especially when it comes to bitcoin so lots happening soon a lots of uncertainty with the u.s elections coming soon we also have china making some major movements as well when it comes to integrating their new cbdc central bank digital currency called dcep onto new phones so huawei the new phones that are coming out are already integrating a dcep wallet inside so yet again this actually shows that <laughs> moving digital is on the agenda of world governments now so with china already pushing out their favorite favorite mobile phone brand to integrate these features you can rest assured that the rest of the world is also moving to digital currencies now what does this have to do with bitcoin well technically speaking these step isn't bitcoin it's not based on blockchain technology but it has a lot of inspirations from it and a lot of people are speculating that people can cross that bridge over from not just a kind of a physical bridge into crypto but more of not a rainbow bridge but a more of a digital bridge more of a cross chain moving from dcep into bitcoin that's been speculated for a long time we still haven't seen that yet off this moment but some interesting developments right there also finally so starting today so what we'll do is we'll do a very quick summary of the markets today and we'll talk about the main core issues and then we'll jump straight into some discussions for everyone so if you guys like content like this make sure you smash up those likes it's so important on youtube i've been reading more about how youtube actually works over the weekend it's darn important talk smash up those likes subscribe to this channel all right no i know I, I preach this a lot but anyways guys it really does help really really appreciate it so really love you guys for that as well so now starting off just before we start i do want to tell you about a few things that's going on so we have an in nft giveaway for box money so basically right now I'll put this link up here so we're you know a lot of people are asking about non-fungible tokens and how to get them and etc so we have an nft giveaway basically it's run on gleam so it makes my life a lot easier because well i don't have to handle anything the software just on the back bloop, 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 handles everything for that we also have the newsletter releasing this week so boxmining.com slash newsletter um i'll put this link as well um the other links will be on the bottom below um and lastly lastly i do want to say that we do actually have a box mining announcement channel and we have been doing daily updates on our telegram announcement channel so that I put the link down there. It's actually pretty cool. Uh, it's actually really, really cool. There's been daily updates about what's happening, and we'll go through some of the news announcements. And lastly, and but the but least, last but not least, Bitcoin out of the box. Search for it. Bitcoin, Bitcoin out of the box. That's my podcast channel. We've been starting that quite recently, and well, things are going really well. So check it out. Privacy on the blockchain. Don Song latest interview. Pretty darn cool. Just search for it. It's on everything. Spotify like apple podcasts everything anything that's like a podcast google podcast just search bitcoin out of the box you will find it that is going to be the best situation so taking a quick look at the markets right now we have bitcoin almost inching up to 14k just look at that over the weekend it has been pretty aggressive and in fact this last seven days as well has been pretty aggressive so my current stance on Bitcoin is that I've been dollar cost buying back into Bitcoin. So I've been telling you guys that I did have like last week, I did have around 20% off my portfolio right now in stables. All right. It was unfortunate because last week I wasn't super bullish. I was still looking at this market and I felt like there was just too much expectations. Everyone wanted 
25k Bitcoin. No, no, no. 250k Bitcoin. No, no, no. You're dreaming. A million dollar Bitcoin, right? That was the kind of expectations the market was on. I feel like that's kind of decreasing a slight bit. At least I, on my channels and at least on the, 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 the ones that I've been into, I've been trying to slam down the brakes a little bit and say, you know what, guys, let's be extremely realistic here. You know, Bitcoin, yes, I do see huge growth potential but at the same time it also has grown phenomenally this year it's one of the best not the one of the it is the best performing asset of the year if you look at all major assets like stocks okay tesla's been doing great but bitcoin have you checked that out you know this is what it's kind of at at this current point so yes we are moving up i'm looking for additional confirmations for a full-on bull market so a lot of people they're really looking for you know major major movements right that's kind of the kind of the key here but in terms of kind of the fundamental markets, what we know is that, yes, we do know that institutions are slowly creeping in. We've been seeing that for a while now. Yes, we did break through some previous resistances on Bitcoin, and that's why we're kind of inching on. But we're on this upper trajectory, 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 trajectory right now. So all of these are really great signs. But what am I really looking for as well? I'm looking for general public interest into Bitcoin. I'm looking for more people coming back bitcoin search results going through the roof public talking about it that's kind of how that momentum really gets started so yet again in terms of that respect it's still it's it's you know it's growing but it's not phenomenal yet so if, if you, you can search for bitcoins um, trends we've seen we've seen that like recently google trends for bitcoin it's not skyrocketed it hasn't gone up for for the freaky freaking roof just yet but we've been seeing gradually increase in that momentum searches worldwide in the past 12 months so what i'm looking really for if just, just to illustrate the point i'm looking for this like a, this giant spike that we saw so that's kind of the situation we're in and right now with this whole uncertainty in u.s elections that's happening right now bitcoin's becoming a big safe haven a lot of the groups that i'm in right now they're talking about gold and bitcoin because right now the markets are scared markets dipped on friday so on friday bitcoin went down with the market right so um in the u.s markets yeah bitcoin didn't do so well it went it went down with everyone else but afterwards on this weekend what happened was that because there was uncertainty in the stock market the theory is kind of interesting right so i'm not going to go too much into politics i kind of vowed myself to, to stay away from that stuff because it's so darn toxic like the, the discussion level is just insane but people are thinking okay if trump wins good for market everything goes up if biden wins bad for market everything goes down so does that mean you know it's bad for bitcoin if biden wins question mark is but the recent kind of thought and theory is that if markets go down they're going to look for a place to put their crypto right actually not the crypto their money so kind of the theory is that because gold is so valuable gold and bitcoin these kind of hard assets are becoming so valuable these days that even regardless of whoever wins bitcoin's gonna go up <laughs> that's a great theory yeah i like that i love that i love that i heard that i was like oh that makes that kind of makes sense i mean even if the stock market takes a hit like we did on friday bitcoin you know where are they gonna go right the right now the, the, the biggest issue right now is that interest rates are so darn low i mean uh, um I, <laughs> I have a confession to make so i did go to the bank because i do have fiat deposits and then yet again i was looking at three month six month one year time deposits and uh i was getting quotations like hsbc is probably the worst one they're basically giving me zero so 0.0 percent but i did find a bank with one percent interest per annum and i'm like you know what <laughs> i'll put my money there so yeah so for fiat there's just no way right that's that's kind of the problem that the normies are facing in the fiat world they just don't know where to put the money so that's where crypto comes in yet again it's one of the best performing asset classes a little bit you know i'm sure there's a lot of people who are fearing the volatility of crypto at its current point but at the same time it's a global transfer of value without any sort of government intervention and that makes it extremely powerful there so that's why yet again long term 
bullish. And in fact, I'm a, a little, bit, little bit more bullish than last week as well. Quite a lot more bullish than last week. I feel like this current, yet, yet again, this current climate that we're facing right now with this global uncertainty when it comes to the election results, because the, the way to, v to view those election results is that it has a global impact because of how different those two candidates are. And if you guys actually are looking at results, I'm not going to argue with these guys here, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying, if you want to look at President 2020, you can have Trump win and Trump lose tokens up on FTX. So yeah, so Trump win is looking at um, at 34 percent. That's what FTX. That's what traders on FTX are thinking. They're thinking that he has a 34 percent probability of winning. Press um, election and Trump lose right now is around yeah. Psst, the, the reverse right 65 percent so that's kind of interesting if uh, to gauge it the reason why i kind of view this as a little bit more important or more valuable information than just classic you know polls and stuff is because this actually has monetary value associated to it so people have to put money where the mouth is at a lot of times people speak 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 and then you know when when it comes to hard assets hard money hard trading they don't get anywhere right so that's where prediction markets come in and yet again ftx is just playing around with that so anyways that's kind of the current situation right now we also have let's see ethereum just i just um, glanced at it is also moving up as well so we have ethereum almost touching 400 us dollars yet again so yet again i did buy some eth at around 380 so i did take a little bit uh <laughs> dca back into this market so yes again um i was a little bit too um i felt like i had too much stables um in terms of what i was having and i'm moving a little bit more of that back into the market it seems to be a little bit more rational especially if you just look at the longer term i just yeah i felt like there was a little bit of fomo when crypto dropped and dipped a little bit i was like yeah you know what good it's finding some entry points doink, 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 doink. um that did pretty well so that's kind of it for the story this week so right now bitcoin is definitely holding a four plus five percent this week ethereum was down one percent so it's not too significant over here but bitcoin being the kind of the leader here in the space you know having consistent gains over a period of time is becoming quite important so what else as well you know not too much DeFi is still taking a hit if you look at the past seven days the overall trend is the downward trend on DeFi. we have urine finance dropping quite a bit while we've banned uh, filecoin is still taking hits i mean yeah, that's kind of expected though and we have kind of new ones vite vite VT, VT coming up. I don't know. This is something new um, that entered the list. Nexo, Kusama, Ocean Protocol, Block Staff. So last 20, that's seven days. And if you look at it, last 24 hours, yeah, Ample Forth is moving up too. So that, that's your canary in the mines for market sentiment then it seems to be pretty bullish at that point also on the speaking of ample forth and rebasing tokens i have a really great debate you guys know that i'm not a very big person on rebases but also i definitely would encourage you to check out this debate where i argue it out with nick from rebase protocol so uh, not rebase protocol, from base protocol not base the base protocol so you can check out that stuff and we i really hit him hard on this one and there was a really good discussion so highly highly encourage you guys to check that out now on to some of the re more or less recent news as well so i've got the article on the huawei on huawei series mate 40 is supporting dcep china's digital currency so inbuilt support so let your wallet upgrade the end is the first smartphone to support digital rimming b hardware wallets the hardware level security controllable anonymous protection dual offline transactions you know they knew about this ages ago, right? It's very, very clear that China drew a path to create this new digital version of the B. So yet again, it's not a new currency, right? It's still the B, the national currency, but they're just making it digital. And that gives a, f a lot of advantages, a lot, a huge amount of advantages, because now it's a pure digital currency. Now they can 
basically allow it to be transferred. It allows people to store it even. That's kind of powerful. It allows people to have full custody over that currency. So it's essentially moving towards what we've been having in crypto for a long as time. And we have a full article on DCEP. So you can just search DCEP on Google, um, China's national digital currency, DCEP overview. We have a very, very detailed article on that. But at the end of the day, here's, here's the deal, right? So it, it is just one-to-one renminbi and it is issued by the central bank so people's bank of china they've issued it and they've been growing to push that adoption for ages so over the past few months they haven't been very quiet about this they have been very loud on this they have been proactively giving airdrops of people in shenzhen this digital currency for them to use they've been giving actual airdrops off this coin then they've been pushing their favorite you know <laughs> we know the huawei situation we know that story they've been pushing their favorite phone manufacturer to inc um, to include payment so this isn't this ain't going nowhere this this experiment is going to be a full-on attack why is china doing this well in the grand scale of things they want to challenge the us dollar that has been the full on narrative and they're using the power of digital currencies to do so and borrowing technology from blockchain if that doesn't validate blockchain technology for you guys i don't know what does they basically stole a lot of bitcoin's playbook but of course made one key difference which is that it's centralized so yet again what i'm saying here is that this is actually very bullish in the long run for the whole crypto market because china is now playing a hand that is essentially a digital currency hand something based on blockchain and with that comes the ability to bridge currencies and i definitely expect to see that coming up soon i mean multiple projects have expressed interest to allow the hop from dcep straight into that currency so now yeah maybe you can have a decentralized exchange with the with dcep you know crossing over but of course there is one caveat as well which is that for larger transactions they do need the signature of the People's Bank of China, which is kind of interesting. So yet again, it's like you can see centralized elements there. And this is why we're not getting immediate hops over from DCEP to Fiat. But interesting enough, a few things in China. So I just want to update you guys. So yes, there was negative news on OKX, but I want to correct a few things. There was this OKX rumor that was circulating around that um, Star Shu has been arrested. So um, this is technically incorrect. So if you read articles like this, um, this is still incorrect. The founder's arrest. So yet again, it's he's not... He's been taken into custody. He's working with police, but technically it's not a full unrest. He hasn't been charged with anything. There has been like these false rumors that happened over the weekend where Star has been charged with certain action that he's going to go to prison. That's uncertain yet. So China does have the right to detain people and then they can put them under... Technically, it's not a rest, all right? Technically, it's a nice hotel room that you sit in. <laughs> I don't know. This is a very interesting way of describing things. But yet again, it's not... They can have the right to kind of keep them there for 30 days. Um, but he hasn't been charged with anything yet. So just be careful. The language here is very, very interesting. He, you know, the way OKX phrased it is that they, he's cooperating with authorities, right? He hasn't been put, put under arrest. So anyway, so we have some see, to see some further developments on that. So that's a negative news coming out of China. But at the same time, the rumors are boiling up that exchanges in China are potentially going to be reactivated again. So yet again, this is kind of like conflicting information. Sure, Star is detained or he's magically sitting in a hotel room by himself. But at the same time, so there's been rumors that Huobi and OKX are going to be reopened in China, which is very interesting. So the rumor right now is that they're going to reopen, but not for withdrawing Bitcoin, but only for fiat to Bitcoin. So you can buy, but you can't sell. Interesting. Interesting. Anyways, magic, magic. So we have also have an article as well. Um, yeah, OKX. So Angela, thanks for pointing that out. We have... Yeah, the, the suspended withdrawals and the latest story on everything. 
so that's pretty much it for the kind of the big picture of everything that's going on we also have a few rug pulls over the weekend so just be a little bit careful guys so we we have an update on quite a lot of rug pulls on our announcements channel so i'll post that announcement channel again definitely take it up we only post basically videos and also the latest news and that's kind of um, interesting going forward but we did see like um, there were quite a few reports on our channel where let's see um, core team sold almost 900 ETH so that caused a crash Kepler whatever that is crashed to zero uh, Stacy I think people uh um aped into that that didn't, didn't do so well so uh, um quite a few projects yeah it's not um it's been pretty uh, like that's a that's a current market the, the current market is definitely taking a hit from apeness so how do how should i say this so the trend in DeFi was to buy first, ask questions later. And that's where the term aping into X, Y, and Z comes into play. So if you ape into something like Keeper, which we talked about last week, then yeah, you just buy it without knowing what it is, right? So I know quite a few friends that aped into Keeper and I myself, I did have an entry point of around $26. But yet again, this is kind of a DeFi trend that happened where because the prices of a currency or the underlying the asset is rising so fast, you don't have time to buy to research it before um, having a, f a position into it, right? So that's a very bad trend. The other trend, so now it's kind of a situation where people are like, oh, ape into Andre stuff, but everything else is going to be very scary. And it is a lot of the other DeFi stuff is designed to scam apes that's kind of the way it is it's like it probably has something it presents something that's very interesting on the outset but inside is just full of back doors which allows developers to just outright scam a community once it's built up so you can see a lot of money's on stake here i mean at the end of the day um the information provided by cloud by the way thank you so much cloud for that um it's pretty awesome that you guys do the daily updates um this is like super super hot right now to have an overview of what's happening but the overview is that developers are just making a crap ton of money scamming people right now i mean if you can make 900 eth for like what's that what's that amount right 900 eth times current price of 400 so what that is like what three hundred sixty thousand dollars if you just want to scam people for a week just make something scam people for a week make money i mean that's that's a hell of a lot of chunk of change right there so just be very very careful guys i feel still feel right now the, the situation is that developers are not some developers are becoming malicious and choosing to scam people so yeah that's that's my current take and that's also why recently like this weekend i just said i took a i took a break this weekend so i just went out like shopping therapy it always works right shopping I love shopping right and then like right now in hong kong it's a little bit easier to shop because there hasn't been as many tourists we used to rely on tourism to kind of fuel our shopping commerce section right so yeah no tourists right now so now they want domestic spending they have to have coupons and a bunch of stuff to attract people back to spend and yeah just buying a bunch of stuff is pretty cool so anyways um alc says i miss hong kong singapore taipei the downturn we can't travel overseas returning is so difficult i really this year has been hard like i usually like to travel a bit as well just to get out i mean right now i've been stuck in hong kong for literally a year now so you know it's not easy it's not easy or half a year um year uh, half, like let's say eight months right since everything started so it's been pretty group um brutal crypto learners is what's the trend in DeFi? so DeFi right now last week was pretty good because um keeper kind of just shot up like crazy so a lot of people got a lot made a lot of money into it um especially if they got into early so yet again it was a situation where it started off with at a dollar and then it shot up to 222 dollars right now so yeah that was good but the rest of DeFi is still taking a hit so that's the kind of this current situation DeFi has legs right but DeFi now needs to actually deliver more and more products it needs to ship products and ship tools but obviously development takes a long time and people want to speculate so right now the speculation demand is much more than what developers can give so we're also fueled by like 
uh, kind of novelty projects that uh, it's fun right so we saw halloween based project maybe some vampire trading projects and all that stuff that's the kind of state of defy defy in terms of the speculation you see that huge amount of def um, demand there you see projects catering to that demand but they you know, they're kind of just re-spinning the same concepts and then, you know, shoving it in with a minor innovation. But the problem is we need major innovations in DeFi right now to push it to the next level. For example, scaling when it comes to trading on decentralized exchanges. That's like the next crazy huge upgrade. Maybe the next huge upgrade is also some form of limit orders, a better form of being able to set limit, buy and sell orders on AMM exchanges like Uniswap. There's a lot of features to be demanded here. Like there's a lot of room for growth, but at the same time, we're kind of lured in by, you know, novelty projects. And that's kind of the current situation where people just want to put up a project fast and raise money because there's money there. So that's kind of the current take. Quick look at the market as well. So yet again, so not the market, at the news as well. Just going to run it through very quickly. This is something I've been saying for a while. Reserve Bank of Australia forms partnership to research CBDCs. All of a sudden, oh my God, CBDCs have become the top biggest topic. And this is something that we knew already, right? If you... You know, China led the way for this. And so now everyone wants to follow. I mean, even Hong Kong is trying to make a CBDC. We saw Canada do, trying to do the same thing. And previously, it was a lot of talk, 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 talk. But now it's like, okay, look, it's been live. It's been deployed in China. Now, now what are you guys going to do? Right. So now that just a sense of urgency to deploy that. Uh, well, we have this stuff. Warren Buffett praises stock dollar cost averaging, but does it work for Bitcoin? I mean, who reads this stuff? I love Joseph. I love Joseph, by the way. Uh, his titles are so catchy now. I love it. I love it. Just including big names plus pump, plus pump topics. But, you know, we've been saying DC for a long time. So that's, uh, I don't, I don't think we really need to read it. Um, we got Huobi launches two new wraps assets on Ethereum. Users are apathetic to it. So they're going to launch the H token series Litecoin and wrapped Litecoin and wrapped BTC, um, BSV. So the idea of wrapping is basically the token actually holds the underlying assets. So somehow you can unwrap that token and then cross chain and claim the asset. I think this is one of the most powerful tools so the biggest example of this would be wrap bitcoin and the same thing was actually said for wrap bitcoin wbtc initially wrap btc was not very popular and there were like news articles like oh ha, 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 we you know these ether guys they wrapped one bitcoin on the ethereum blockchain after like their line just sucks no one's gonna care but now wrap bitcoin has a market cap of 1.6 billion dollars so this is a situation where wrapping becomes key but I do have my doubts on centralized figures wrapping it. Recently, there has been more and more better technology to allow us to cross a chain. The best way, obviously, with smart clients is a smart contract to smart contract interaction. So these kind of cross-chain atomic swap, the cross-chain bridges are becoming important. Not atomic swaps, I have to say, because it's like, it's a little bit different there. But we saw, we're seeing kind of like Polkadot building these kind of interoperability bridging layers and solutions. So eventually, yeah, we can see coins cross network and we saw with flamingo as well you can cross from ethereum to neo to have your kind of f w e move that over to the neo blockchain and use it there so we're seeing this power of block um, assets and now you want more and more things to be unwrapped but obviously with coins that are currency based so bitcoin litecoin they have a limited number of contract operations and this is what makes it hard and this is why figuring out a way to wrap assets is hard so we've seen this underway and we've seen attempts to do this so it just clearly shows that hobby is trying to actively take a stab at the market yeah i see i see movement i see movement we got ripple cto tries to offer answers for the lack of adoption i don't know where it's gonna head i mean look ripple protocol definitely going to get adopted somehow xrp not too sure not too sure on that um yeah that's pretty much it for the weekend honestly there's there's not too much um yeah 
lawyer for one coin scammer ruja crypto queen gets disbarred i mean yeah sure why not um yeah <laughs> um yeah not too much not too much big news to be honest not too much big news so that's pretty much it let's have a discussion and we have to walk and wrap up today's session i'm also very hungry today i'm having actually uh, yesterday i had a, like a very very short um meal so today i'm like i am super hungry today um so we have talks about layer two projects i feel layer two is becoming so important um i think it's becoming a point where um there are multiple ways for layer two to be executed and now it's kind of a way to figure out which one so actually that really inspires me like so that question and comment i think i'm going to do some layer two uh research and videos this week that kind of makes sense so that could be cool uh Jerry Draper Jr. So you are not excited to try the token generator project out? I mean, there are so many token generators. That's why I'm not excited. I'm sorry. So like, I mean, there there's like a ERC twenty token generator, no? ERC twenty token. I don't. I'm not in a in any mood to generate or make my own coin generator. Um, you know, there's this one, and there's a few. Um, I can show you guys how to do it. I mean, that's cool. So yeah. Um, box mining is planned you're hungry i haven't had water in days look at how healthy my plant is look at that plant look at the plant that plant is very very healthy <laughs> that troll of a box mining plant <laughs> love you guys love you guys it's uh it's where it's at um fox fox raymond says layer two needs a metamask or a mobile dap wallet i think so and also some i mean the kind of interesting thing is not just that, right? If you look at Moonswap, right, they implemented something called Conflux as a way to scale and a high performance blockchain, blah, blah, blah. They have all the tools there, just that no one uses it. Like people still like Ethereum and people still want, like if people are used to a certain routine. And so I think that's kind of the way to dis dis disrupt it. Like to have a routine that's basically um integrated into every wallet solution um placed into metamask not a new metamask but a, placed into current metamask that's kind of where it's at um <laughs> uh we got uh, llama 6666 Lau, michael you need bulletproof coffee to starve off hunger properly i think so i think so but yeah i really like this plan i read um and talking about plans i saw a few discussion fake plants finally this is our real plan so um this plant's been doing very, very well. Um, it's like, it's very, it's kind of, it's not so weird, right? It's almost crispy in texture. Like if you, if you actually look at it, it's very, very crispy in texture. It was, it was also like, um, this one, this particular one was like, what, 30 bucks. So I was like, whoa, that's really expensive. But at the same time, you know, I was like, this seemed to fit the best for this office space. So I actually spent some time looking at how to care for plants now. So like this plant, I move it every day. Like after I'm done with the live stream, I move it to where it gets like a semi sunshine. So it's like, a um, you know, the, the sun shines, but not directly on a plant. Like it's moved away, like a away, little bit away from the sunlight, but it still has enough sunlight. Anyways, it's been doing great. Um, bulletproof coffee is so nice. I actually need to look and Google that up. Bulletproof coffee, bullet, bulletproof coffee. Um, what are your thoughts on ocean? I haven't done too much look um, analysis on ocean. And, um, actually, uh, Michael asks at Box Money, what's your thoughts on injective protocol? It's layer two also, but injective is a protocol, but it's also primarily focused on exchange, right? So it's a derivatives exchange built on, um, on, uh, yeah. So, mm, like. It won't be used to scale Ethereum per se, but it'll be used for derivatives transactions. I think that's kind of the way it's at right now. So Injective has been getting a lot of love from Binance recently. In fact, Binance has been giving a lot of projects a lot of love recently. I think that's kind of the current trend right now. Everyone, like it's almost like one per week, right? They have a both launch pool and launch pad, and then just they just been throwing stuff at it like crazy. Um, yeah, you know why not, right? The market's good. They they are they're gonna add like insane amounts of stuff to it so that seems to be the tr trend with binance um certa k recently launched a launch pool uh yeah audio listed and then we got yeah quite a lot of stuff bot bounce is right now in innovation zone that's cool 
yeah, it's 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 a it's a handful of stuff being added. Like Binance is super active. Their their team got flipped from being passive to aggressive in a space of like three months, right? Like initially we said, yeah, CZ was a little bit late into the whole DeFi game, but then then he just slammed down the gas and said, you know what, guys, let's go ape, let's go ape at this. Um, so yeah, so that seems to be the current case right now. Like that's kind of crazy. Um, hey Michael, what's um, this is from Ray? Um, Ray Tay says, Hey Michael, what's your thoughts on layer two Uniswap solutions like Unitrade, Unilayer, or even Falcon Swap? It doesn't seem to be picking up much traction, is it? Um, I know like Falcon Swap was showed hard to me by a few people, so I won't put, put out names there, but yeah, I was like, Oh, it showed really hard to me. Like, I, I do have Falcon Swap exposure, but it's like people don't seem to be actively using it, right? This is the biggest problem. I think like with all these kind of um, solutions, Uniswap layer, like it's like, um, it seems like the general public is still waiting for Uniswap to scale themselves. Very interesting, very interesting. So, yeah. Mm. XDAI, we have mentions of XDAI and Honeyswap and... Um, <laughs> I think like a lot of people they're looking for moonshots right now, but at the same time, it's like, is this the best time to be getting into moon swaps, right? Like moon uh, moonshots. I think it is uh, to research it, sure. But right now, because Bitcoin is still has yet to flex. I mean, during the Bitcoin major flex, it's like that's my current take on it, right? If Bitcoin, Bitcoin, if we believe in the theory that Bitcoin is gonna bring up the market and it's gonna flex majorly. Then during Bitcoin's rally, a lot of altcoins go on sale, right? That will be the best entry time, no? So right now, I'm, I'm not investing aggressively into altcoins. The last very aggressive investment I made was with Swag. Um, and that's because I believe they have a real, like, not that I believe, they, I know they have a real business, right? So that's that's kind of the stuff happening there. Uh, what happened to Swap? We're actually, we got, we're actually doing some cool stuff with Swap Swap um, with uh, Trust Swap's Jeff Kredakis very soon. So we're planning a ma major episode, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, well, Lazarus says Binance is in trouble. I think, um, yeah, it's, it's fine. It's fine. So I think that's pretty much it. Like, I think not too much happening this week. I'm going to do a live stream maybe midweek this week. So make sure you guys hit that notification bell to be notified when new live streams are announced. But the scheduled live stream, uh, I'm just going to put that up here. The scheduled live stream is on Friday. So let's put that up. Let's create the live stream for Friday. Um, giveaways are going to be done by and handled by um, the NFT, the, the Gleam thing. So I'll give you guys the link for that if you guys are interested did in giveaways we're gonna actually also add telegram invites to that very soon as well i just need to figure out how to do it but i thought you know handing out giveaway handling giveaways like in a more um formal mash manner makes a lot of sense just using what's the tools available just saves a lot of time so um how long will outs get crushed for um just basically after like the day after Bitcoin rallies, the, the the day after a Bitcoin rally is done, all coins always come out to play. It's like it's like the mouse, right? The big cat's like prowling, right? Once the big cat's down prowling and it's lying down, all the mice come out to play. That's usually the pattern there. So I'm not too concerned. I'm just like, I'm spectating, but I'm not aggressively investing, if that makes any sense to you guys. So we'll put the Friday stream up there, Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, and Ethereum update. So we'll do that on Friday. Friday, 11 a.m., boom, smashing that down over there, create. And I'm going to share this with everyone. So make sure, guys, once this is up, click the like button, too, for that. It just really does help, too. So um, I'll share this in the live chat right now. And come on Discord this week. So this is the one. So it's scheduled in three days, November the 6th at 11 a.m. And also I'll show you up the proper time. So boom, boom, set a reminder. That's the best way to do it. Do I play crypto games? I should. I, I will have a game week this week. So we also have um, Discord up as well. So if you guys, I'll spend some bit more time on Discord this week. So um let's see discord discord's been growing very well actually so box nation crypto i'll invite you guys there um it's been growing quite well we got a thousand something people here already and um it's very very clean too so thank you all guys all for that we'll have a we'll have a game week this week 
Um, so if you guys want to join game week on Discord, Discord link is in the description down below. See, box money's plant's so good. I, I, you know, the last plant died, right? The last plant was dead. I was just seeing a lot of discussion on box money's plant. The last plant died because I sucked, right? I didn't know how to keep plants. Now it's a little bit better. Like now I know a few basic things. Like when, like I used to like water it with tap water, but I used to water it immediately from the tap. That's toxic. You have to like leave the water around for a while. I've been doing for a while. And so it just clears out of all the, chlor um, the chlorine and stuff they put in the water. So now it's like, it's really healthy. I'm like, I'm really glad it's like healthy and nice and cool. So anyways, uh, <laughs> And that's it. We got SD playing generals right now. We're still hooked on that as a community playing generals.io. But yeah, if you guys want to do game night and stuff, um, yeah, there's plenty of stuff going on. Um, I've been having a blast just doing some stuff other than YouTube videos. Um, that's my confession. I'm like, I'm still roughly most of the time. I'm like this week, I've been fi finding a little bit of time to just play with computer stuff. Um, recently, I've been figuring out how to like say um there's a there's steam steam has a remote play feature i'm trying to f make a unit so that you can remote play games on your switch if that makes sense that makes sense i mean switch is the perfect console for that right you just have a gaming rig then you steam link onto your nintendo switch and they can play fall guys and stuff and sh stuff I, I saw some videos on that it's pretty cool but of course it involves hacking your switch so it's like i'm that's my kind of like job this week i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna try to figure out how that works and try to figure out if we can play fall guys i'll tell you if that works or not but i think that's that, that sounds cool right that's actually cool um fall guys stream there's a new season of fall guys too so i mean why not why don't we all play fall guys or something but yeah i am super hungry um we got fox rayman says check out my game punchline in thunder core hub i should actually check that out actually fox fox rayman um i'll check out your game that sounds pretty cool um cool um big frank driving says keeper binance listing probable probable but also i mean keeper also did a 200x so be very careful i mean last time i last time there was rumors of a binance listing i got severely burned for that that was with um mta actually there was a rumor that it, like binance was going to list mta and i got exposure to that and then it's just like it just went on a down downward spiral as people who bought earlier than me sold and dumped so just be very careful with that um axie infinity another blockchain game uh, okay here's the thing with axie try it play that game play it all right play it as a gamer play that game i am sure you're not gonna have a lot of fun that's the sad part right maybe in the future like for sixty dollars that you have to spend buying those axes i did not have sixty dollars worth of fun i rather uh, like i'm looking forward to like some good games right like red dead was great this year uh, this is okay. This is just me, right? At a personal level, like as a gamer, right? I spent sixty dollars. I expect sixty dollars of value, right? Red Dead was great um, this year. I also played what um, the recent game I've been playing is Civ Six, Civilization Six, and that was on discount too. Civ Six was good. Um, what else is good? Um, I don't think I played that many games, to be fair. Even Death Stranding, I bought it on discount. It wasn't bad. I, I got my $20 worth of fun out of that. Um, like, I'm very stingy as a gamer. I can tell. You can tell. You can tell. I'm very stingy. I'm like, if I spend 60 bucks, I gotta. it's got to provide, like, 20 hours of entertainment. Baldur's Gate was not great. Um, I bought it, refunded it within the first 20 minutes. Um, just didn't like the turn-based st turn style. So, I was like, I was so cheap that, yeah, I actually refunded it. Um, I was like, I was so excited for Baldur's Gate 3 because um, it's one of the my childhood games, right? Like, I played Baldur's Gate 2. It was phenomenal. But the combat system just didn't remind me of Baldur's Gate, Baldur's Gate 2. It just, the nostalgia just wasn't there. So, anyways, that's that's it. Um, Michael says World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft is a game you should never touch. Final, Final, Final Fantasy VII Remake was freaking good super good super 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 good like ff7 remake oh my god that was great man that was like a good game so i mean if you talk about gamers like you know crypto and gaming sure but the game element of the crypto game has to be super good too right like we're spoiled by really good games really good titles um even half-life alex i was playing half-life alex on my um quest 
um that was great like dude like half-life alex man like that was like a whole new experience like that was worth my 60 dollars, right and in fact i'm so cheap like i'll tell you one of my cheapest things i've been doing i'm, I'm, I'm a kind of a douchebag for doing this but you can vp into russia and change your steam um country to russia <laughs> and you get even cheaper games okay it's just 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 like i'm i'm i'm, I'm a douche right like that's that's just me all right but yeah you can you can get like um like yeah so so yeah roughly i spent like 20 bucks on half-life alex or something like that and i was like oh it was definitely worth it anyways that's it i'm starving i am starving guys um <sighs> I am super starving. Um, I'll do more this week. Um, Michael asks, why should you never touch WoW? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, well, the problem with WoW is it's so addictive, right? Like you get into that co-economy, then you start building a guild, and then like, yeah, your time, your time will drain to zero. Like, like, trust me, trust me, trust me. Archimon was the best fight ever, all right? Like, as a guild, we had the best time. Burning Crusade times, best time. But that fight was like, like it was fun. It was fun. But yet again, uh, times. Um, um, uh, Ryan Tay says, yes, Michael, that's why I never understand criticizing subscription games like M MMOs. They provide so much fun. People like, so, uh, people please say MMOs are retarded. It's not that MMOs are retarded. It's just that, once you get in and because you become so valuable you can't leave i mean that's the biggest issue with mmos like if like you're part of a community you get your your time gets drained right like that's that's the only time reason if 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 i was like when i basically the way i said it is like when i retire i formally retire when i'm 60 or something sure i'm gonna run a guild like I'm gonna run a guild, I'm gonna do it proper, I'm gonna kill the best bosses, I'm gonna down the best bosses, right? When I'm 60. And we actually did have like a 60 year old in our guild as well. And that's fine. But like when you're like, when you're still fighting, you gotta have your time. Like you gotta, like for me, the way I take gaming right now is like, it's gotta be like short and fun. That's the, that's the rule, right? It can't be like, you gotta like watch a million videos to learn how to play that game and then play, right? That's why it also I'm not playing League of Legends as much. It's just like League, you gotta be like on the ball every single day. You gotta research what's the current meta, what's the jungle meta, what's the jungle pathing. If you're Shavana on the other side and you're uh, Shen Zhao on, if you're Shen Zhao versus Shavana, what should you do versus a Shen Zhao versus Warwick versus a Shen Zhao versus Master Yi? It's like it's crazy the amount of work you have to do to research and and the way the game works is that you got to know where people are going to walk so like you're, you're spending most of your time remembering pathing you're remembering if it's like a dance right if they do this you need to do this otherwise they're gonna stomp you right that's the way it goes so anyways that's that's gaming for me 101 that's that's too much so right now i'm just like learning easier games and that's too much Anyways, uh, long story cut short, that's very, very deep into gaming. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed that talk. Guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Smash up the likes. We have 77 likes. Let's hit that up to 100, guys. Um, yeah, while it's right there, boom, boom, boom. Hit that up. Thank you guys for watching. See you.